When you're working in Power Query, at times you would want to have custom order of the columns that are loaded in Excel or in Power BI. However, the order of the columns has no impact on the model, but perhaps you're using the Power Query work in automating some other thing where the column order matters. How can you make column reordering easy and perhaps even dynamic is something that I'm going to talk about in this video. You'll have a lot of fun. Let's start. All right, fellas, I'm in Excel Power Query here and I'm working with some very simple data. Just two steps right here, source and change type. This is some generic YouTube content data, but I would like to reorder the columns of this data. Now, before I start to write the M code to be able to solve the problem, let's take a look at what code gets generated while you move the columns around in Power Query. And we will take a look at the same code and try to tweak it to kind of design our automated query. Nevertheless, take a look. So let's just maybe perhaps take the views and the likes column and push it towards the left. So I just want to have the views as the second column and likes as the third column. Even though I have just moved two columns of the data to change its position, you can take a look that all the columns are being positioned right here. So content column is the first column, then views, then likes, and all the other columns are listed right here. And the other thing that you go to notice is that the table.reorder columns function accepts the columns which are to be repositioned as a list. So this is nothing but the curly braces right here, and this is the curly braces right here, and that is a list. So in order for us to not have these columns hard coded, we would also have to come up a, with a list structure so that we can feed it right here and then start to work. Right. So what we're going to do first thing, after we've identified the problem, let's just create like a user interface for the user to be able to define what position does the user want at what column. And then we will grab that user input and feed it into the query right here. To be able to do that, let me just kind of delete this step that I have done. And I am going to, let's just say duplicate this particular query. So right click and I'll say, I want to duplicate this query. And I am going to write a new step here. And I'm going to maybe just get the names of all the columns that I have in the query. So I'm going to use the function called table.columnNames. Uh, oops, start the bracket and close the bracket in the end. And then that's good to go. Column MN, column names, and that's the list of all the columns. Let's just also call this as columns. And that is good to go. Now, at the moment, this particular list that I have it in Power Query, I'm going to load that in Excel. Once I have loaded the list that I had it with, with all the names of the columns in Excel, what I can do is I can give this Excel user interface to the user and then he can start to mention the positions of the columns that he would like to see. So I can perhaps write something like position, position number, and that's where the user can define what position does he want the column on. So perhaps let's just say that user says, hey, I want to have the first column as publish date, uh, the second column as the content, and then I'd like to have three, four, five. I'm just giving it like some numbers. Uh, this is, let's say, nine, this is eight, and that's column number 10. Right? That's the position that the user wants to see all the columns. Now, this particular table needs to be rendered back into Power Query and start to affect the table that we had and to change the position. So I'm going to take this table that I have loaded with one extra column that the user has provided. I will take this table and put that in Power Query from the data tab. I'll say from table range. Once the query has been loaded in Power Query, I can quickly just uh, not call this as columns two. I can call this as columns position. And now the other thing that I would want to do is that because the columns need to be reordered and the user has given the positions, I can quickly sort the table in the ascending order. So right click sort, not right click, but just click on the column header, sort in the ascending order and those are the columns that I would like to need. From this particular table that we have right here, please note that I only want to extract the names of the columns in this order because this is sorted now. And this should be a list, not in the table format, but in the list format. So I'm just going to go back to the data table right here. And I am going to go ahead and create a new step. And in the new step, I will start to write the formula table.reorder columns. Table.reorder columns, first part is nothing but the name of the table, which you are trying to reorder. Then we need to have the column order as a list. And I can just go ahead and say that, hey, the query name was column positions, I believe. Let's just take a look. It's column position, so I can just maybe copy that, control C, and paste that right here. Paste that right here. And since it has a space, so I need to include the hash sign and the double quotation marks. And then from this table at the moment, I need to extract a column to be able to make it as a list. What was the name of the column right here? It was called columns, and that is what I'm going to extract. So square bracket, C-O-L-S, and kind of good to go. 
press enter and if you now take a look at the query right here it has changed the position of all the columns. So publish date becomes the first column, content becomes the second column, views becomes the third column, so on and so forth. And now this table is ready to be loaded back into Excel. A little twist to this particular problem could be, what if the user says that, hey, I know what do I want as the first four columns, but I don't really care about the rest of the columns. So let's just say the user says that I want the publish date to be the first column, content to be the second column, perhaps the views to be the third column, and I would like to have the CTR as let's say the fourth column right here. Now the user hasn't defined the positions of the rest of the columns and if you take a look at the query now the query is going to start to show blanks. Now in that scenario we can make a certain tweak to the query. So if I just quickly go back to the query of column positions and if I take a look at uh, I have a couple of null values right here. Now in this scenario, in case the user hasn't provided the positions of the columns, we need to make sure that all the nulls are filled with like a really high value. So they all come down at the bottom. So I can right click on this query and I can say that, hey, um, where are you? Replace values, replace values with a null with let's say a really large number, maybe a thousand and click on OK. And we're going to move the replaced value step above the sorted rows so that uh, all of that comes down. And after the rows have been sorted, you can see that all the numbers have come up, one, two, three, four, and all the columns are at the bottom. The other very important thing to understand is that I'm making an assumption in this particular scenario is that the columns are always going to be started with the first column. That means the user will decide the first few columns that he or she needs, and the rest columns can then be decided automatically, which in our case are all going to come at the bottom. Now, the solution works just fine. Publish date, content, views, and CTR are going to be the first four columns of the data. If I just go right here and take a look, publish date, content, views, and CTR are the first four columns of the data, and the query works just as fine. All right, that's been it. This was a little tutorial on how to dynamically position the columns and give the control to the user so the user can decide on what column positions does he want to see the columns. In case you've faced the problem in the past and this was a good solution, please do let me know in the comments that this video was helpful. Before you go, I'd like to give a big shout out about my M, DAX and Power Query training courses. In case you're struggling to learn Power BI in a very structured way and you'd like to build your solid fundamentals first and then move on to solving harder, more difficult problems on your own and build confidence to be able to solve such problems, I will highly recommend that you please take a look at my courses. It's gonna be super awesome. Thanks so much for watching this all along and I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Bye.